Welcome back to the Mark Jackson Show. I'm Mark Jackson, and you're watching on the Come and Talk to Me Network. Special shout out to my guys, Cameron and Mace, two legends out of Harlem, New York City, for making this happen. I want to give a special shout out also to my co host, my incredible dynamic co host, Blue Jackson. Still my rook. Don't get it twisted. Still? Still. I got some time now. And you got some time being a rookie. <laughs> Blue Jackson, my question to you is where did the nickname Blue come from? I like you point guarding this. this this episode right here. <laughs> I'll, I'll play the shooting guard role, but you know me, I'm gonna go get my bucket. So before go. I answer your question, we gotta, we gotta talk about our sponsors, is that okay? That's fine. All right, shouts out to Underdog Fantasy. If you click the link in the description right now below, they're giving away free money. If you match, they will match up to $100 if you use the code MARK in the description, M-A-R-K. Go click that link, man, it's free money. Well, that was good. I'm, I'm signing up as we speak. That's what I'm saying. I had to look at it twice. I had to go get my link. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about how you, how you got the nickname Blue. <laughs> <laughs> He's just going to skip over Yeah, that. I'm going to skip crazy. over it. Please, go ahead. I got the name Blue. I got. If we was at home, you wouldn't let me get away You're with it. You're right. That. Go ahead. But it's all right. I got the name Blue from, from my mom. She gave it to me, and uh, I was young. I had blue eyes ever since I was a baby. Uh, it was a nickname that she would call me as a term of endearment. As I got older, I got green eyes. They they took the blue. God took the blue eyes away from me, but I still kept the name blue. The crazy thing is, I always thought it was from that day when you was about twelve years old, and I blew by you and Here dunked on you. Here in, we go. You dunked on me in the garage. What, in the driveway. what year was it? What year was it in your career when I was twelve years old for you to be throwing it on anybody? The rim was low in the driveway. I, I okay. see. I left All out. Right, I right. edited that right. part of the story. You're right. Did so I, I catch you? You caught me. Dunking on you. No, did I ever catch when the rim was low and I was I was twelve? Did I ever throw it no, on? No, not when you was twelve. What? No, 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 no. I'm nice on the on the eighth on the eighth rim. Six, but that, six you, eight. You had what color eyes when you when you first were born? Azul. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> what you mean? You speak a little Spanish? No, I'm it's blue. That's, okay, that's a blue eye. That's good. That's good. You you prefer the blue eyes or the green eyes? It's not about what I like. It's about it's about what the people like. Oh, the people. Okay. What's me? <laughs> Go ahead, man. Move, move on. Go ahead. Man. We the talked people. about we, the people. What you mean? The people. You don't mean the people. If we was at home, you wouldn't say the people. You're right. You're right. You're right. So we talked about my, my nickname. Where'd you get the nickname Action from? Wow. I no longer go by that nickname, but uh, when I was 11 years old, I'm playing in a CYO, Catholic Youth League organization, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm in an all-star game, and I'm playing and I'm scoring, and they, you know when you play in some of these nice areas, they got announcers. So they had an announcer, and I, I would score, and the announcer goes, basket by Mark Jackson. I'd score again, basket by Mark Jackson. So it got to a point where he was, you know, continued to say it, I humbly submit. And out of nowhere, my mom, who was never shy and is known by everybody in the NBA before she passed away a couple of years ago, known by every referee, very loud, different than my dad, but... I went and scored, 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 and then it got tired. She stood, stood up and she yells, his name isn't Mark Jackson. It's Action Jackson. I'm 11 <laughs> years old. I'm like, are you kidding me? Mom, sit down, man. You're lying. And that did not come from Nana. I scored the next basket, and sure enough, the announcer goes, basket by Action That's Jackson. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. Yeah, yeah. She's uh, sorely missed. Incredible mom. Incredible, Incredibly supportive. And uh, every referee in the NBA knew her because she'd be yelling out, singing three blind mice as they blew calls. Not only every referee, everybody in that arena knew Nana. The funny <laughs> thing the funny thing is, how about when she'd come to you guys' games and she'd be just she'd as loud, not thing. understanding, put your foot on the gas pedal uh, or the brakes a little bit. They can't, you know, it's not the same thing. So she was... Oh, we'd be at Pan Pacific with, with grandparents ready to fight because I'm 12 years old and 5'11". <laughs> and Nana's in the crowd like, cook them, grandson, yeah. cook them. yeah. It was it was so it was it was some good times. Well, she though. had me on Facetime. You're a grown man playing in rec leagues. She's like, show me how my baby's on. Your baby, he's a grown man. He's, he's... Oh, I was her baby still. No, oh, yeah. relax. I was her baby. Okay. But don't do that. To, no, don't you're do right. that you're, you're right. I, I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. So, New York City Rookie of the Year. I need some moments from what was that? 80, 87? 1987. 80, 87. What's the, what's the best moments from the rookie year? There's some great memories uh, playing. I was a kid dreaming, growing up in New York City, dreaming about playing for the New York Knicks. Wore number 15 my entire life until I got to uh, high school where somebody had number 15 and I couldn't wear it. I changed my number uh, to 33 in high school. And then when I got to college, somebody was wearing 33. So I changed that 13, but I wore it to 15 for Earl Monroe. Wore the New York Knicks uniform, won a championship in New York City. 
my proudest moment, obviously, is winning this 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 incredible award. I believe 78 uh, Rookie of the Year trophies have been given out. So this is one of 78. And to think about a guy that grew up in New York City that dreamt of playing professional basketball could hold the all-time assist record in the, in the whatever amount of years the NBA has existed. Nobody has had more assists than me in a single season as a rookie. It's incredibly humbling. Uh, it's something I'll forever cherish. And that's when you think about the greats that have come along. Uh, it's an unbelievable record. But to, to play in Madison Square Garden and to see some of your classmates from elementary school or your teachers from middle school cheering and, 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 and your, your, your high school coach, it was absolutely unbelievable. And I would not have been able to play 17 years had I not played initially with an all-time great in Patrick Ewing and have an all-time great coach in Coach Rick Pitino. They propelled my career and allowed me to wind up playing 17 years, but this is something I'll forever cherish. 13 points a game, 10 assists. Hold up, 10.6. 10 points. 10.6 <laughs> assists a game. Rookie of the year, you rolling. How did it feel for the Celtics just to shut you down and beat y'all 3-1? This dude, that you, year? What? That's, we fighting dirty now? What you mean? No, we fighting dirty? No, you was the man. And then, I mean, you set it up so beautifully like you was going to piggyback something that I said to give me some props, but instead you... I'm giving you an opportunity to clean up. Maybe What's you, you the might... question? Huh? What's the question? You heard the question. <laughs> <laughs> Can you repeat the you question? Heard... How many points? 10.6 assists. Yes. 13 points, 10.6 assists. Rookie of the year, you rolling. I'm sure you headed into the playoffs like I'm about to... I know you. You thought you was about <laughs> to PG your way to a, to a championship. How, how did that first series go as a rookie? Rookie of the year. We're playing the Boston Celtics. Uh-huh with four guys in the starting lineup that are now Hall of Famers and a fifth guy that was a very good player. This is an all-time great team. Uh, we believed that we could beat them, but just young and dumb, we didn't, we didn't know any better. They went up 2-0, and I can remember going into game three, our first home game, I can remember something's got to give. So I remember as, as, as if it was yesterday, instead of driving to the game, I take the train. Uh -huh. I just wanted to be amongst the people. This so is took, game three? Game three in Madison Square Garden. I down go and take I down. We, I, I already cleared up that we were down okay. two. I don't no, need, I'm just making sure I don't need scene. a deacon in the, in, the, in, the, in the choir. You know, I don't need, I don't need, I don't need that. So I take the train. People on the train hyping, us, hyping me up, you know, high five and go get them tonight. We love you, yada, yada, yada. We win game three, and now we think, okay, it's, 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 it's about to be on. It's going to be a series. Man, Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, Robert Parrish, Dennis Johnson, Danny Ainge, they put on a clinic. They, they, they truly are one of the great teams in the history of this league, and they beat us 3-1, but it was an honor to play against them. And uh, it, it just similar to when I was the coach of the Golden State Warriors, we played against the San Antonio Spurs, and we lost to them in the playoffs in six, in six games. But I really believe that they made the Warriors better, just like the Celtics made the Knicks better. When you play against great teams that execute – fundamentally sound, don't make mistakes, extremely well coached, you can only learn from them. Because at some point you figure out, why can't we beat them? We, 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 it seems like we're as talented, if, uh, if not more talented, but somehow they continue to make the right plays on both sides of the floor to put them in position to win. So it makes you better. And I thought that that, that Celtic series uh, started something for the New York Knicks moving forward. And this dude went off and made me talk about getting beat by Larry Bird and the Celtics. I mean, this, come on, man. It's a good story. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think this wasn't the vision I had when I said let's start a Mark Jackson show. What vision did you have? <laughs> no, I, it wasn't Blue Blue Jackson sitting there, you know, destroying me and no, nah, no, nah, that's a big make me moment. hold my head down and upset about being any other. You want to talk about a sweep, a loss? You want anything, anything else? I'm just putting, I'm putting together a list of of players that that sent you home, players that cooked you. I'm trying to put it put it together. We got AI. AI and, didn't send me home, huh? Yeah, I didn't send me home. Okay, okay. Way to double down on it. No, Thank he's you. he's he's an all time great, but he didn't send me home. Okay, Bird sent me home. All right, so let's well, just start. He, he didn't send me home, huh? He sent our team home. All right, I'll take that. This is a team game. I know, I know. I'm a point guard. I'm a distribute. I'm a distributor. I like to make plays for guy. You only see the basket. If they, if they haven't seen you play, you are a flat out scorer in attack mode at all times on the court. So you don't. It, they they would have sent you home. They sent my team home. You need a new a new scouting report because my game has changed. As I've as I've grown older, I've matured more. I get a bucket when I need to, but 
you be proud. I orchestrate. I was proud then. I'm a lot. I'm a lot like you know, Bron. Me? Huh? You said Bronny. <laughs> Bronny got game too. No, I do, Bronny but he yeah, doesn't like have bronze game. So, no. yeah, I'm Bronny. I'm Bronny and Bron put together. So okay. it's, it's similar, somewhere okay. in the middle. Okay, I agree. Where Where do you have um? This just came to my mind. Where do you have Larry Bird in an all time small forward conversation? That's a great question. I have LeBron James as the greatest small forward to ever play the game. I have Larry Bird at number two. Mm. And uh, when you look, I mean, playing against him, he'd tell you what he was doing. He'd trash talk as well documented. You know, he, the guy scored 40 with his left hand against a Portland Trailblazer team that wasn't a bottom feeding team. It was a playoff team with proven guys. He was toying with guys on a nightly basis. Incredible basketball player, incredibly smart. A genius on the floor, underrated defender, tremendous competitor, incredible passer, obviously an incredible shooter. He had no flaws, no weaknesses. He, he wasn't the fastest guy, he wasn't the most athletic guy, but he was absolutely incredible. Now, when I watch highlights of Larry, I don't know what player in today's game I would compare him to. There's, I don't, when I see him make those moves, I don't see a player doing what Larry Bird was doing in a, in a one-for-one -one type Scenario. Do you have a player that you would compare to him? One guy I would probably say has Larry Bird tendencies and some similarity would be Luka Doncic. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I said it before, I think he's a mixture of Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, his ability to play the point, distribute the basketball, great size, can score, tremendous footwork. Uh, so I would probably say Larry Bird. And the one guy that probably had some Larry Bird uh, tendencies that is now retired is Dirk Nowitzki. You remember when uh, when you were on the Pacers, Larry Bird was was the GM? It was the head coach. Was the head coach. I was too young to really even understand everything that was going on. But do you remember when we were in Indiana and uh, you were playing and halftime came around and they called me out to uh, to dance at halftime, do the competition? Yes, I do, I do remember. <laughs> we, we don't need that film. No, we don't need that film. I pray it's burned. I pray it's somewhere. Why don't the good you share is, with the folks what kind of dance routine you did? The good thing is it was in it was in Conseco Fieldhouse, so that's they moved. It's probably the footage is in there somewhere. So what, what kind of dance did you do? It wasn't my best moment, man. <laughs> it wasn't my best moment. I, how old was I? Eight. About eight Ten, years old. Eight nine. I was eight nine. I thought I was big and bad. When they came up to me, they was like, "You want to dance at halftime?" You know, I ain't never really danced at that time. I was like, "Yeah, I dance. I cook at the family reunion. You crazy?" <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, I dance." I went out there, I looked up, and all them people was in the crowd. All I, I promise, all I remember is blinking, and I just, <laughs> real suburban kid style, yeah, I closed yeah. my eyes and just started yeah. flailing my arms yeah. everywhere, spinning around. I did the most Calabasas dance yeah. you could ever imagine. And I remember walking off the, walk, before I walked off the court, they did the thing where they put their hands over the kids. The first <laughs> kid, <laughs> the first kid, the crowd went crazy, so I'm like, oh snap, they're gonna love me. They got to me and the crowd was like, it was like three people like. <laughs> <laughs> I came in the back and saw you, I was so embarrassed, man. Uh, we, I mean, we've had moments like that, but look at you now. Yeah. But you mentioned Larry Bird. The thing that I remember playing for Larry Bird, which I respect so much as a head coach, and you get so many former great players that think they gotta impress you and do things out of character. Larry Bird was totally secure with who he was as a basketball player and a basketball head coach. He knew his strengths and he knew his weaknesses. He had an offensive coordinator in Rick Carlisle. He had a defensive coordinator in Dick Harder. And he had veterans that trusted him. He didn't get out of character. He let us be who we truly were. And we wound up you know, having to run all the way to the NBA Finals playing against the great Shaquille O'Neal and the great Kobe Bryant with that Laker team that won their first championship. But it was because of Larry Brown, Larry Bird, who won Coach of the Year, being totally secure with who he was. Is that your mentality when you coach? Yes, that's part of my mentality. The other, the other part is instill principles, instill beliefs, trust in my guys, and then when the light's on, you know, we prepared for this. Uh, it's, it's, it's a fun thing to be able to, be, to, to know that you've done everything you've done from a coach's standpoint, now let them play. Steve Kerr. Just got the bag. Reportedly a two-year extension. Lines up exactly with Steph Curry's two years that are left on his contract. What's your 
outlook on what the Warriors will be in two years. Well, first of all, congratulations, Steve Kerr. Well-deserved extension. Yes. And uh, he's done an incredible job and put his name amongst the greats to have a coach in this league. So a well-deserved extension for him. Uh, what do I, where do I see the Warriors two years from now? This is a team led by ownership, management, and players that refuse to sit on the lead or accept things how they are. So I expect them to still be relevant. I expect them to still be a basketball team to have a chance to be in the mix come playoff time. And, and, and as far as advancing and having a real shot, I expect Steph Curry to still be playing. Father Time at some, at some point will catch up to him like it does everybody, but it doesn't seem, doesn't seem like he's gaining ground right now. He's an incredible all-time great player that continues to set the tone for that Golden State Warriors basketball team. I still see them relevant two years from now. And truthfully, I see Steve Kerr continuing to coach. I see him continuing to coach uh, because he's done an incredible job. Why leave wins and potential championships on the table? Bouncing off of just the, the Steph Curry statement that you made. Hold up, he got two years, 35 million, right? Got the bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I just, it, it just hit me. Like, yeah. He, but That's it, Coach Kerr. It, 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 yeah, why not? <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's a deserved extension, really. Yeah. He has shown me nothing but love, respect, and appreciation and uh, has opened his door to me. We've had a great relationship from day one, and I got a lot of respect for him and how he handled sensitive times, not only for him, but for me. Shout out and congrats again. Yes, sir. I was gonna say. You know what, I just gotta tell a quick story. This, Come on. Because this is Steve Kerr. Uh, obviously, I get fired, he gets hired. Now it's awkward if now I'm calling NBA games and I gotta go interview Steve Kerr in my office. So it, it's very awkward. To his credit, and nobody knows this, for 10 years now, I've never went in that office, or the new office, and interviewed Steve Kerr. He's been gracious enough, kind enough, to come to me. Valuable. Yeah. Valuable. How did you handle because this just brings me to the thought of, of humility. How did you handle all of those years? Because the Warriors are our dynasty. It was years of after that situation. I don't know, we haven't spoken about whether we would talk about this on this episode, so I'm putting you on the spot. But how did you handle calling those games, watching dudes that you built with win and succeed? How did you it's process a, it's, a, it's a great question. I will say this. You read the internet and people will say, ESPN treating Mark Jackson so bad, got him calling those games. No, this is the A game. I'm part of the A team as far as the announcing crew. This is the games that we're going to call. As long as they continue to win, they're going to see more and more of me, Mike Green, Jeff Van Gundy, and Lisa Salters. How did I handle it? I handle it like a man of God would handle it. And first and foremost, this is how I handle it. I can remember calling NBA Finals Orlando Magic against the Los Angeles Lakers. Jeff Van Gundy now has to announce the NBA Finals with his brother over there coaching the Orlando Magic. And he's like, how am I going to do this? And I remember pulling him to the side like it was yesterday. I said, dude, so it's your brother. You grew up in the bedroom with him, dreaming of this. Think about you are calling the NBA Finals, and he is head coach in the team in the NBA Finals. The two kids in the room, this is where you are today. And every single time I had to call a game for the Warriors, thought about that kid dreaming of this. I'm calling the NBA Finals. Are you kidding me? I'm excited. I'm honored. I'm thrilled. And I'm blessed. And I think that, that has to be the thought process. Uh, I went through a similar situation, you know, firsthand when I was at Louisville after Uncle Troy's passing. I left school. I couldn't handle it. And amongst other things, but it was, it was, heart, it was, it was heart wrenching that time. And when I left, I watched my teammates that same year win a national championship. And so for me, watching that, it was, it was difficult. I was only 18, 19 years old, and it was hard for me. And I didn't know how to process it. But then watching you go through everything that you did, it helped me understand, OK, you know, God has a plan for me. There is, there, there's another day. And that's the thing. Every day that we wake up is another opportunity and another chance to impact lives, to move forward. And I talk to you all the time. It's, it's about this moment in time. Whatever has happened in the past, 
is honestly irrelevant. And whatever is going to happen in the future is out of our control. So in this moment right now, we owe it to, we owe it to ourselves to have, have joy, have peace, and you know, be able to still live with things that are out of our control. You know what I mean? And to celebrate. Yeah. Celebrate. We, we, yeah. we winning. Yeah. We're winning. And, and, and it, don't get it twisted. It's not just because you have a show. My next breath is a win. That's right. So, so, so you got to be again to celebrate the small wins, uh, and, and quite honestly, fake it till you make it. Mm-hmm. And some, and it's not. I'm not sitting there telling you it was easy calling those games, because there's a side of me, the flesh side of me, saying that's my crew, that's my team. No, but that, that is not my time, and it's not what I. You know what I want? What's for me? That's all I want. That's, good. that's all yeah. I want is what's for me. Yeah, and I'm good with that. And that's enough. You're good at this. <laughs> So with the West, we got one game in between from, from one to seven, one game difference. Playing, we've got one, two game difference. It's packed. Who do you see as the biggest threat in that play inside of it? In the West, I really see right now you look at New Orleans, you look at Dallas, you look at the Lakers, you look at the Warriors, seven through 10. And any one of those four teams can win a playoff round and move forward. With the star power that they have, with the talent that they have, uh, they have the ability to win at home and on the road. You're talking about a Laker team led by LeBron James and Anthony Davis. You're talking about a Warriors team led by Steph Curry and the incredible supporting cast. You look at Dallas with Luka and Kyrie. You look at New Orleans with Zion and B.I. and C.J. I mean, it is wide open. And I I wouldn't want to handpick any one of them to, to fight. And it's not like they're, they're playing against a juggernaut at the top of the Western Conference. It's not the Denver Nuggets at the top today as we speak. You more likely got to face Minnesota, Oklahoma City, two talented teams as well accomplished, but two teams that haven't had much playoff success. So inexperience as far as playoff success is concerned. So it makes it much more exciting and intriguing. I believe that the West is wide open and we, we will know because ultimately it's what the matchups will be, how uh, vulnerable those teams at the at, at, at the top will be. I want to share share my picks also, but Utah and Houston are, are one of those are two of those teams that really are almost in, in what what you could say a rebuild mode, but they're right on the brink of that plan. How do you think a team like that goes into the rest of the season uh, mentality wise? To me, let's win ball games. Yeah. Let's win every night. Whether we're home or on the road, let's compete and not leave food on the table. Put ourselves in position because the teams in front of us have proven throughout the first half of this season that they can go on a two, three-game, four-game losing streak. And before you know it, if we can put three, four together winning, we're right back in the mix. So have the mentality that let's take care of business on a nightly basis. And then when it's all said and done, look where we fall. But start winning games and competing. And let's not have nights where we take off or nights where things aren't going our way. Let's make things go our way. In the East, it's teams in the playoff zone, playing zone. Same question. Who do you see as a threat on that backside in the Eastern Conference? To me, it's different than the West. I can single-handedly pick one team in the East. Uh, it makes it easier, and I'm going with the team that has been proven to turn it on and have the ability to go from a play-in team to a championship-level team. That's the Miami Heat. Toughness, competitive spirit, a culture, an incredible basketball coach, great star power, and uh, can win their individual matchups, and uh, talented with, with great depth at every position. So I would say the Miami Heat is a team that has a chance to beat anybody in the Eastern Conference. Now, I'm not going to pick them against the Boston Celtics, but can they beat the Boston Celtics? Absolutely. Can they beat the Milwaukee Bucks? Yes, it's proven. That's a team that I wouldn't want to face because of their edge that they play with, the discipline that they have from a coaching standpoint, and uh, the depth that they have as far as talent is concerned. I never gave you my picks. I'm listening. West, you already know, Lakers. I think the Lakers, no matter where they fall in the mix, I think the cream rises to the top. We're going to handle business when it gets there. So I didn't know you was French. Huh? We going to handle business? What you mean, man? No, we? We, we. <laughs> we, 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 we. You know how we do. Okay. We got the GOAT right, right out there. Okay. He might be down there right now. 
Okay, I didn't say anything. You got so you have the Lakers. Go ahead. I got the Lakers. East Eastern Conference. I agree with you. I think the Heat are are very good. Currently, I don't know if if you're gonna let me get away with this, but if I'm gonna pick a team that's somewhere around there, I like the Knicks in the Eastern Conference. You and like I, them for what? On that, I don't know if that's what I'm saying. I don't know if you want me to. You want to allow me to count it in that back side of the East with this? No, you, I'm saying you like them to get to the conference finals or the finals. As a, I like them as a threat. You know what? Yeah, man. I like the Knicks. If Julius Randle is healthy, I like them to go to the finals. I mean, they, they have a style. They're well coached. They defend. They compete. The thing I like about them, they have competitive spirit at every position. And that's how you win in this league. You look throughout their lineup and you can identify 10 guys that are a plus when you talk about competitive spirit in between those lines. Top to bottom, uh, they, they've accomplished that. So you don't have to worry about, are we going to be outworked on a nightly basis? They work, they defend, they got proven guys. And if you get Julius Randle back, you got another guy to add with Jalen Brunson to take a pressure off of him from, from being the you know, primary scorer night in and night out. The team that I'm disappointed in the East is the Atlanta Hawks. I think they are loaded talent-wise, and they have fallen short from what we expected them to build on in playoff success a couple of years ago. How much of that personality that you speak of when you speak about the Knicks comes from being in the city and just how New York is? Nothing. <laughs> and I, I say that respectfully. I say that respectfully. Historically and today, if you put Jalen Brunson in Tupelo, Mississippi, he's going to be a gritty, grimy, competitive, you know, get after, do whatever it takes, winning type of mentality guy. You put D DiVincenzo, you put Josh Hart, you put Hartenstein, you put Alec Burke, you put Mitchell Robinson. I mean, you, you go all throughout, you put Julius Randle, you, you go all throughout that lineup, you got guys that you wouldn't want to face. And it's historically. Charles Oakley, you find him in, in a park in Cleveland, it's going to be a fight. It has nothing to do with the, with respectfully say, the, the grit and grind of New York City. That's not what it is. It's the individual that brings their talent to the city, not the city that imposes its mentality into the individual. Pat Ewan was a nasty competitor and a winner when he was in Cambridge, Massachusetts. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. So I think it's more so you got to make sure as a guy making decisions who I want on my basketball team, you better find guys that compete at a high level and guys that you don't have to beg to get in the gym. I want to make sure if I say day off, I got to like, I coach the Golden State Warriors. Okay, day off, if you want to come in and get shots, come in and get shots. I come in 8 in the morning, by 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, it's 15 dudes out there getting shots. 15 dudes. You think, you think they just stumble on the winning? That's it's impressive. a mentality. That's impressive. It's a mentality. And you don't have to – so you're giving them days off knowing that they're going to take care of business. That's how you win. It's no secret. I, I've been around guys, you say day off, and they, they done mapped out their whole day. <laughs> nothing to do with the gym, nothing to do with getting shots up, nothing to do with getting better or treatment. They done map their whole day out. You better find you some guys that love this game. How much of that is on coaching to, to draw that out of, of people? Or do you think that a player's capabilities with that, it, they are who they are? No, I, 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 I think it's a combination. They are who they are, but you can also motivate, inspire, and bring out of something, someone what, what they never utilized before. So there are going to be certain guys that don't have that in them to want to get to the gym. Those guys you got to get rid of. And then there's some guys, this is what I said from day one when I became a coach. I want great leaders or great followers. Don't give me 12 great leaders. That's not realistic. Give me the guys that's willing to follow the great leaders and now they're, they're, they're headed in the right direction. So maybe 15 guys didn't want to come to the gym. Maybe 10 of them did. But the other five dragged themselves to the gym because they knew they'd be exposed if they didn't have the same mentality or acquire the same daily habits that those other guys had. I'm, I'm listening to you speak right now, and it's bringing me back to the father-son aspect. We've got Sabonis, DeMontis Sabonis, the son of Arvita Sabonis, cooking, playing absolutely great. What do you think his, his ceiling is? He's an he's a awesome basketball player. When you look at the numbers he's putting up, should have been an all-star, triple doubles, impacting on the post, impacting at the three-point line, impacting in the horns action, 
as a as a facilitator in pick and roll action, as a dribble handoff guy. Um, he is he is exceptional, and it's great to see his success and how he conducts himself. And it's great to see what those Sacramento Kings as a franchise, what they're doing, striving off of Aaron Fox and Sabonis. I don't think enough people give credit to his dad, how, how, how incredible his, his dad was as a basketball player. I can remember as a young kid playing at St. John's University, we went overseas to play against veteran Olympic teams, and we wound up playing against Arvita Sabonis. I can remember him grabbing one of my teammates' head while he dunked with the other hand. And we were like, yo, this is incredible. And we were legit. Yeah. But we were playing grown men. We didn't stand a chance. We did not stand a chance. But he was that awesome as a player. Uh, really a 2000 version or a 90s version of a Bill Walton. A big man was skilled, could play the point. What you see in Joker today, some similarities there. He was a, he was a phenomenal basketball player. And it's great to see his son have the success he's having. Who, who's better? At their best, who is better? I say this respectfully because they're both all-stars. They're both great players. At their best, Arvita Sabonis is better. The only thing he, he, he'd be, a, he's in the Hall of Fame, but he'd be a surefire Hall of Famer in, 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 a, in a separate room if he stayed healthy because he was that dominant and had no weaknesses as a, as a, as a basketball player with seven-foot legit size. It's time for picture time, Dad. Oh, man. You ready? I guess I got no choice. It's a good one. Is it? Yes. Says you? Oh, I know it's a good one. I know it's a good one. Can we show it? What? What is this, man? Is this a... This is not a Nike Tech. I'm not going to give a what shout out. Of? I'm not going to give a shout out what type it is until we get sponsorship and endorsements off of it. But it's clean. Who are you on the phone with? I got to break news. And why news. do you have the smoky eyes, the, the hazy eyes? What is this? I got to break news. This is how you came in to be, son. <laughs> <laughs> he was not talking to my mother. He was not you, talking to you my see, mother. You see my, you see my Mac move? Man. No, you see my Mac move? She had no choice. Nah, you, you're, I'm not going to lie. Your swag, this, this is a Cartier bracelet? This No, it was special design. You know. You made that? Yeah, yeah, but that's neither hand on there. This <laughs> no, you did it. <laughs> yes, you I did. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. put diamonds in it. Yes, man. This dude was. That's how. Yeah, you might be right. Look at the eyes. You though. got the line up. Yes. Yeah, you was ready. Mom ain't have she no choice. Ready. Yeah, she wasn't ready for this. Yeah, that's how. Was, this rookie of the year, this '87. This man, around that time. Were you born in '88? You're right. Exactly. <laughs> so it wasn't '88. Exactly. You know relax, what it was. Relax. This is my mother. We <laughs> talking about. Relax. <laughs> you did marry her. Got here, bro. Yeah. I mean, I'm. You. I'm sure you can relate. You know when you get into that zone when you spitting lyrics and they got no choice, you know you got them? Yeah. I'm like, I'm starting thinking, is it going to be Mark you... Jr.? Is it going to be Blue Mark II? I'm thinking the names you now. Like, you, felt like Cam, you felt like Cam and Mace? Man, you yes. the bars? Yes, it is what it is. All right, all right. <laughs> I see. <laughs> no, but I mean, this is a this is an incredible picture. I, and at that time, I couldn't grow a goatee. What? I tried. Oh, so you had to do the... The, I had to. Okay. And then, okay. then later on, I was able to develop it. But come on, the payphone chill. Where are you? That's the, the, you ain't gonna clock where I'm at. Yo, it, nah, ju it just happened. This, it just happened. This is not a. This is not a just happened. I see the eyes. The squint in the eyes make me feel like you was posing. Like yo, pick up that. Pick up that phone, Mark. You look fly right now. The the, the funny thing is, I can't remember was it, whether it was ten cent for the call or twenty five <laughs> cent at that time. Were you really making a call, or was it a post? No, no, no. This is, I'm, I'm, I'm in my zone oh, right this, here. You just candid. No, I'm, I'm, I'm in my zone right you here. Just looked over off the phone, like. Yeah. I feel you. Cause, cause probably another shorty thought I was talking. Not you, not you. Oh, you had to tell her relax. Yeah, not you. Relax. You just had to pull like that. Not, nah, we not. I doing mean, that. you was rookie of the year, New York City. <laughs> I, I, don't need it. I, don't, I don't need a hype man. Huh? I don't need a hype man. I'm just trying. You know, you look. <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing. Oh, oh, oh. I'm seeing right here. You was looking. Uh, pause. But you was looking handsome, man. Ah, uh, come on, man. What? I don't need that. I don't uh -huh. need that. Huh? Great, great picture though. That's the that's the advantages. Like I used to take for granted documenting moments mm -hmm. at a particular time, but how valuable it is it to be able to go back and see these moments and where you were and how far you've come and how you've grown and developed. I don't take it for granted. Let's get this next picture, man. We got a two for one special today. Who's your cameraman? Who's getting huh? you to all this footage? That's what I like. I to got know. the footage, man. Just know. You gotta you stay better, out of storage. You better start scrubbing <laughs> the past. Anything that you don't want me to find, I'm pulling the pictures out. Okay. Let's show this picture, <laughs> man. Right here, we got you and Omari Hardwick 
Should executive producer 50 Cent bring back Omari Hardwick on the hit show Power? Is that a question? That's not, that's not even a question. 1,000%. We never saw the funeral. We got to get Ghost back. We need him. I'm talking about one of the legendary characters in the history of TV. He, he's got he's to gotta find his way back. He could still be alive somewhere. Nothing happened to Ghost. Huh? I mean, don't, 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 don't shot me. Ghost, Ghost is fine. <laughs> but, but this picture, though, he's Bay Area's finest, and I had an opportunity to spend some time with him, and I got nothing but love and respect for him. Showed me love. Down to earth, humble guy. Uh, we broke bread. We spent time together. Um, honored to know him and honored to every now and then, whether it be me texting him or him texting me, that's a subtle flex. Just a word of encouragement and acknowledging each other. Uh, something I don't take for granted, but he is an absolute legend and a guy that is incredibly talented, not just as an actor, but musically and across the board. Did you say where this picture was taken at? I, I believe it was an all-star game. Don't give me the line, but I would say the All-Star game in L.A., uh, we, we, we took a picture on the court. No, oh, he's a legend, man. That's one of my favorites. So Power had me hooked. Had me hooked. I was running, rushing home trying to watch Power. Great show. Yeah. 50 Cent is rolling. Yeah, 50 Cent, another legend. The city, the city is buzzing. Where's he from? The city. Queens, New York. I was about to say, I thought you was really, I thought you was serious when you asked that. I was no, about no, to say. No, 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 no. I all know right, you all know. All right, all right, all right. That's a legend, too. Yes, absolutely. We need a word from our sponsors, man. Underdog Fantasy. Don't forget, like I said, they're giving away free money. Click the link in the description below. They're matching up to $100. Use the code MARK. That's M-A-R-K, and they will match it. It's free money. Why not, man? Thanks again for watching. That's a wrap for The Mark Jackson Show. I'm Mark Jackson. And again, please send your questions or comments. We'd love to respond and interact with you. Don't forget to continue to watch us on Cameron and Mason's Come and Talk to Me Network YouTube channel. Blessings.